So firstly, hopefully everybody can see the screen. And thank you for joining this Tiger Prism webinar on channel group utilization and just explaining about channel groups and how it all works in Prism. So covered today, we're going to spend sort of the first five minutes going through terminology and technology. We'll then go and look at configuring channel groups and understanding how they're set. Also, as part of this introduction, I'm going to explain to you what cube seizures are and how they work in Tiger Prism. We'll then have a look at analytics. We'll have a look at the report in the report suite, and then we'll look at the dashboards and how we interact with the dashboards. So the first thing that we will discuss is the technology and terminology. Now, for some of you, you'll be very used to this. Some of you may have never dealt with channel groups or trunks before. So I'm just going to quickly cover off some of the basics of the telephony. So we'll first of all look at analog telephony. So analog telephony, everyone should be used to this. Um, this is the type of thing that you'll have at home, where you'll have an analog line connected by two copper cables. This is where you would have plain old telephones or analog <laughs> telephones. And these will be have a one-to-one -one relationship with a PSTN number. So you will have these types of devices on your telephony network. And these would be things for like fax machines or credit card lines. So what is the future of ISDN um, and analog lines? So in the UK, DT have announced, this is as of the last couple of weeks, that in 2025, they will be switching off ISDN lines. So in 2020, they will stop taking orders for ISDN lines, and you'll have to start using IP-based options. This means that your phone systems will have to start using IP-based telephony. So what this means is, with the old way that we used to have it at the moment, we used to have analog lines. So there are two types of analog lines. There is ISDN2 and there is ISDN30. So ISDN2 means that it can carry two simultaneous calls at the same time, so the concurrency is two. Or you can have an ISDN30 where the concurrency is 30 channels. These are more of a professional way of doing it than analog lines, but again, you'll have one number into this analog line. But the trouble is, if you move, unfortunately, you'll have to get a new number if you move out of the current area where you are. The good thing, though, about ISDN is the quality is always very good on them. The other thing with ISDN 30s, you can break down the amount of channels that are available. So with ISDN 30s, you may only need 15 of those 30 channels live, but they do come in blocks of 30. So you have to keep that in mind when ordering ISDN lines. So going forward, we will start going um, using SIP technology. SIP technology means the calls will be carried over the internet. What this means is that the phone numbers can be changed to your SIP lines and the physical cables and stuff that used to have to be plugged in, like with ISDN and analog lines, they don't need to be physically plugged in anymore because they'll be using the broadband or your internet connections that you already have in your office. So what are the benefits of this? Well, you'll have lower rentals on your SIP trunks, especially if you've got multiple ISDN lines and you're shrinking down to, say, two SIP lines. You'll have lower call charges, so they'll be significantly cheaper, the calls. And you may even find a lot of providers will give you bundled minutes. If you move offices out of geographical area, it means that you can keep the same number. Or you could even do something along the lines of having a London number, even though you're in Manchester or Birmingham. You could eliminate VoIP gateways, so you could start to take out gateways from offices and use a centralized SIP gateway. It's also flexible, so what it means is you can phone up the provider and add or remove channels without somebody physically coming in and installing in hardware. So if you need to up your concurrency, you can simply contact your provider and up your concurrency there and then. So what Tiger will do, though, is help you look for the correct number of channels. So within the reporting, when you move from ISDN to SIP, what we can do is we can help you tell your provider how many concurrent calls that you require to make your service work for your customers. So we can help you calculate all this information when you're moving from ISDN to SIP. Also, when you are running your SIP in your new business, what it will also do is make sure that you have the capacity still in place to handle the amount of calls. So that's sort of the overview of the telephony. Uh, the final bit is codex. So what codex are? These are the coders for the audio signals. So as they go across your internet with SIP, what it would do is decode one end and encode the other end. And just there's some examples here of codex. 
Now, within the report, we can model how much bandwidth will be required for these if you use a particular codec. So again, when you're speaking to your SIP providers, you can tell them how much bandwidth you require on your real call data. So the next thing we're going to talk about is cube seizures. So some of you may have seen this in Tiger Prism, especially if you've ever looked at analytics or you've looked at a dashboard. So cube seizures are something that we calculate every 15 minutes. And the way it calculates the information is of every second of every day, we work out how many of your trunks are being used for that particular trunk group. And what we can then do is say across here, then what your concurrent max was, and then how long you're at that maximum for. So in the example below, we can see that trunk group one, two, and three were being used. There was a call for four seconds starting at 12 o'clock. There was a call starting for five seconds at two seconds past 12. And there was a call starting at three seconds past 12 for three seconds. So I can see that at 12 o'clock and three seconds, you have three concurrent calls active, and they were active for one second. So that means your concurrent max was three calls, and it was at the maximum duration for one second. So the concurrent average, what it will do is it will then take this grid here and add it all up. So there are 12 squares that were blank, i.e. there was no calls active on them, and there is 12 squares where there was an active call. So the average on this would be two concurrent calls, okay, because there was 24 seconds and 12 seconds with seizure. So we would say the average concurrency is around two. So what was the peak utilization? So what this means is if I've got three channels available, what was our peak utilization? So here we can see it was 100% the utilization because there the peak utilization there were three active calls, therefore we were using all of our channels that were available to us at that time. So it's 100% on the peak utilization. And the seizure seconds, what we do to calculate this is we count how many red squares there were in this grid. So our seizure seconds would be 12 seconds. So we'll be counting every single red grid. So in our channel group, our seizure time would be 12 seconds. This is important when we go to start to look at analytics. So when we look at the underlying data, you'll start to understand how we calculate this information. Now the calculations are done every 15 minutes, so you'll have to be in batches of 15 minutes. So say every 15 minutes it calculates all of your groups, fills it in a grid like this, and then we can calculate then the concurrency on your maximum duration, the concurrent average, the peak utilization, and the seizure second. So now let's go and look at Tiger Prism, and let's go and look at how we can configure our channel groups and what's the benefit of configuring them. We can then go and look at queue seizures and analytics, the channel group utilization report, and then we'll have a look at some dashboards as well. So once you're logged into your Tiger Prism screen, some of these options may be not available to you. So what you'll need to do is maybe speak to your Tiger Prism administrator, and they'll be able to give you access to these screens. So the first one we're going to look at is network, and within the network screen, what we will be doing is looking at the channel groups. So we're going to be looking at the channel groups. So this is where all of your channel groups are configured within Tiger Prism. So in here, what you'll have is your CDR source, the name, the type of line it is, if there's any products on there which have fixed charges, a description for that line, et cetera, et cetera here. To enable or disable any columns in here, what you can do is you can click on the show hide columns at the bottom here, and you can simply enable or disable any columns that you have available to you. To edit a channel group, what you can do is simply click on the three lines on the left hand side here. You can then come into your channel groups, and you can then configure your channel group. So you can do things like change the description. So you may want it to say Carlisle Office rather than carlisle.tigercoms.com. You could fill in a serial number. So if this is a particular ISDN line, you could put the serial number for the ISDN line. You can choose what type it is, so whether it's an incoming or an ISDN, or you could say it's a voice over IP line. Connection type will always be true connection. The off-hook, on-hook are for older PBXs for when they use an analog line. So make sure they're always set to true connection. 
and costume method, just leave as blank. It will take the default one. This would have been configured by the engineer. The device name, when you're using Skype for Business or Cisco call managers, the device name is the device description configured within the Cisco or the Skype for Business. In a via world or in Mitel world or whatever PBX you may have, there will be the channel group number. So, for example, in Avaya, this will be your trunk access code number, the TAC code. There will be a number rather than a name. You can then fill in which countries this gateway is in. So I could say, well, actually, well, this is in Saudi Arabia or in the United Kingdom. And then I can say which location it's in. Now, it's important that you put the gateways in their correct location. So this one should be in Carlisle. So I would set this location to be in Carlisle. This will allow me in analytics to do location-based reporting. You can then fill in which cost carrier and cost tariff that you're using on that gateway. Then important here is how many channels are available. So what this means is how many concurrent calls can that gateway or channel group make. So in here, at the moment, it's set to five, but it could be that it can carry 15 calls at a time. So this is important because this value is used in all the other screens. So you may have to take some time and go through your channel groups and configure these. You can also fill in how much bandwidth is available. So it may be that this is a 20 meg line. And again, I'll show you where this value becomes useful later on. You can also use Tiger Prism as a database. So you could say that this provider here is BT. The main DDI for this is this number here. You could even put in things like your account manager and even your account number. And what this means is Tiger Prism could be a centralized database that you can label your channel groups with personalized information. Now at the moment you'll notice that it says provider, main DDI, account manager, and account number. These fields are completely configurable to say whatever you'd like them to be. So you could put in say cabinet name, IP address. There's lots of available fields you can put in here. So to configure these fields here, they are contained at the bottom of the network screen under Equipment Custom Fields. If you go into your Equipment Custom Fields and onto Channel Groups or any one of these options here and click the Edit button at the top, you can enable a custom field by clicking on the I and filling in the name of the custom field. You can then reorder these custom fields also just by dragging and dropping them and clicking save here and that field will then become available to you within the channel group name. So if I click on here now, you'll see cabinet name has now appeared and I can populate this information. Now the reason for this is, is that this is now a centralized place that I can see all of that information in this grid here. So I can filter on these, so I can look for all my providers that are BT, and it will return this. Or I can look for my account manager, or even more useful, I can also export this information to Excel or CSV. So I have a centralized place for all my channel groups, all my information. I can export this, and then I could send it to a colleague as well. So if you have any problems, you then have that information available to you. And this can be shared with a colleague as well. There you go. So you'll have all of that information available to you. So it is a good place to put all the centralized information about your channel groups. The other thing that you may need to do is set up your locations. So to set up locations, you can go into your locations and go into search. In here, you can then create locations by clicking on the create button at the top. You can choose which country the location is in. You can give the location a name. You can specify what type the location is. If the location type doesn't match any of your requirements, just click on the plus button to add different location types. You can create regions. Again, these regions are completely customizable to yourself. And you can give it an area code. If you really would like to, you can put the longitude and latitude as the location. So by setting up these locations, you will be able to assign these locations to your channel groups 
allowing you to do reports on locations in on those channel groups as well. So that's the configuration side. So just spend some time having a look at the configuration and making sure that your channel groups are configured correctly. So what we're now going to do is have a look at analytics quickly. So under analytics, you will notice under the search, the one that you'll probably regularly be using is legs. What we're going to have a look at though is cube seizures. So cube seizures allow us to look at the underlying data of the cube seizures that we've calculated within Tiger Prism. So these are, when we looked at that small grid earlier, on the PowerPoint presentation with those 24 grids, you saw whether we've colored them in or not colored them in, this is the data that it creates within Tiger Prism. So what it will do is give us things like the date, the 15 minute period of the data, the CDR source, so the data it was collected on, the channel group name, how many channels are available, and again, this is what was configured within the Tiger system, how many seconds that channel group was seized for, what was its maximum concurrent count. So again, when we looked at that grid at that 12 and 3 seconds, where it was at three concurrent calls, so the, the lines were all filled in red three times, that's the concurrent max. And how long was it at that maximum for? So in here, this instance, we have five concurrent calls between 3.30 and 3.45, but it was only at five concurrent calls for one second. And during that time, the smallest amount of calls we had was two concurrent calls. So there was always at least two concurrent calls happening on that line. And then the concurrent average was 2.2 calls. So this is the really useful information. You can do things like sort on the concurrent max, so what was my busiest time where it was getting to my maximum amount of concurrency. So I can see on channel group two, I had eight concurrent calls. It was eight calls for six seconds, but I always had at least three calls active in that 15 minute period. And my average is sort of four concurrent calls during that 15 minute period. If I want to be specific and look for a specific channel group, Again, like with all your analytics windows, you can drag this information into here and you can filter on a particular channel group number or you can take any of these fields that are available here and drag them into your columns or you can start typing in your column names here and you will be able to add those columns in. Now, maybe I'm not interested to look at a quarter of an hour, so what I could do is I could take out this quarter of an hour, because I don't want it by quarter of an hour, but what I do want to do is look at my seizure seconds and maybe say, well, what was my busiest time? So what was my busiest 15 minutes? So I'm going to look at my maximum. What was my concurrent maximum? What was my biggest value? So I'm going to look at my maximum here. What was the longest time it was at its maximum for? Well, that's not really going to help me if I'm running across, so I may just remove that one for now. Again, concurrent minimum won't help, but let's also get rid of concurrent average as well, just to have a look at what happens here. So I can see now, per day I get my channel groups, I get how many available, I get my longest amount of minutes used on that group, and I also get my biggest amount of concurrency. So I can see that on the 16th, I had a 15 minute period where there was 4,804 seconds in a 15 minute period used and there were eight concurrent calls. And what I can do is I can export this information up here or if I have an alert as well, I can set an alert in here to say that if my maximum concurrency hits eight in here, I can get the system to send me an alert as well. Also as part of the channel groups in the configuration, under the equipment and you will have the calling and called channel groups, there are things as well in here about how many available channels, the bandwidth used, etc. in here. The way to find all of these is if you just type the word channel group, you'll be able to then see all of those channel group fields that are available. Okay? And there'll be things in here like locations and so on as well. So you can use that information you've configured in your channel groups as well within your analytics search. So what I'm going to now cover off is the report. So what reports are available for me on this information as well? 
So if I go and look in my reports window, which reports are available? Well, there's only one report at the moment available in Tiger Prism, which is the Channel Group Utilization Report. So if I run this report, I'm going to choose for January. So I want to look at my data in January. Uh, actually, let's go a bit further. Let's look until 31st of March. Let's run this over three months. I'm not going to filter on any channel groups, although I can if I wish to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this codex, okay? So I'm just going to change this to G722, and I'm going to generate this. And I'll explain why I've changed this in a second when the report loads up. So this report basically gives me a breakdown of my channel groups and how well they've been working. So the first column here, maximum capacity state, means that have I hit the maximum amount of channels that I have available to me. So when I have an asterisk in here, it means I've hit the maximum capacity. So I can see straight away on this report, Birmingham has hit its maximum capacity because it's hit concurrent calls of eight available here. It will then give me all the other information that we looked at in our analytics before, but just in a nice report format. So it tell us how many calls that gateways handles, and it will say how much bandwidth we would require to handle the amount of calls based upon the codec that we use in the bottom right-hand corner here. So if I was to change my codec to a different type, so let's just say a Cisco video link, for example. The volumes here should be changing based upon the codex that we select here. Once you have that data, what you can then do is you can export this information to any one of your preferred options, so for example your Excel spreadsheet, and then you could provide this to whoever requires it. So if you are moving from ISDN to SIP, you can run a report on your ISDN lines and say, right, well the busiest this ISDN line got to was 8, this one was 2, this one was one, so you could add all these up together and say, well, actually, we require, you know, 50 concurrent calls. So this is, the information is really useful for you to go back to your SIP providers and say how many lines you think you'll require if you're moving from one to the other, or if you've already migrated over to SIP, you can just monitor how many calls that are being made on that SIP line. Maybe you're paying for 300 concurrent calls, when actually you're only ever getting to, say, 50. So are you paying too much to the SIP provider for the concurrency? So Tiger will help you monitor that information. These reports can also be scheduled just by clicking on the Schedule button at the top and following the wizard. Again, with these reports, you could get this report sent to you every week with, say, the past three months' worth of data. So you can then start to look for any trends as well. So finally, what we're going to do is go and look at the dashboards. So what can the dashboards give me above and beyond of my report and my analytics? So there are two dashboards available. There is the channel group utilization and the channel group heat map. These are all available under traffic on your dashboards. So if I go and look at channel group utilization, I can now choose which channel groups I would like to look at by coming in here and selecting which channel groups I would like. I can either use specific dates or quick dates, depending on what I'd like to look at. And if I'm looking at specific dates, I can set my to, my from, and my to date. I can then hover over these graphs here and see how many calls were happening at that particular time. Now, I can notice on my graph, though, that there was quite a huge increase visually in outgoing calls in March. So this may be something that I would then like to go and investigate why there was such a, an increase. But I have a visual indication there to show me what was going on with my call volume. I then, on the left-hand pane here, it will then list me all of my channel groups that I have available. As I click onto these channel groups, you will see these graphs here will start to draw the information that's available to them. So what I may be looking at is I may want to look at my graph here 
with concurrent maximum. So when did I have the most amount of concurrent active lines? So I could see in January, I was sort of around eight. It dropped then in February. And then for some reason in March, I don't have any anymore on that line. So there are two things to investigate on this one. Why have we hit maximum capacity? And then why in March did we stop receiving calls? And I can come onto here and I can look at all of these lines here and it will give me a breakdown of what these, these lines are doing. Again, you may look at something like this one here and go, hmm, this is interesting. Look, in January, I didn't have any. Then in February and March, I've now got a massive increase. So the Birmingham and the Chester office, maybe there was a fault in the Chester office in January and then there was a fault in the Birmingham office in March. It also gives me the breakdown of the types of calls. So if you know that one channel is only ever been meant to be handling outgoing or incoming calls that, and you see an increase on them in here, then you could start to question what's going on with them. You can then get a breakdown by weekdays, by quarter hours, by weeks, or by months. So I can come into here and select my month, and I could see which month did we get to the concurrent maximum. Yeah, so I can see in March we hit seven concurrent calls. Okay, so this really helps you really drill into the information. It's nice and clean to see all the info that you require. There is a final dashboard that we will look at, which is the channel group heat map. Now the channel group heat map works in a way that the darker the color and the bigger the square, it reflects on what your measure is set to here. So if I'm looking for which has the biggest number for the concurrent maximum call, and I've selected that here. The bigger the square and the darker the color means that that is the one that has the biggest concurrency or the maximum concurrency. If I want to look at maximum seizure seconds, I can go and see who, which one was using it the most. So I can see in here it was Chester. Now, what I'm interested in though is I want to know why Birmingham got to eight concurrent calls. So these squares are all interactive. So what this means is I can drill into this information. So, for example, in Birmingham here, I want to find out more information. I can click on this square. It will now show me what's going on for this year. So I can see that in January I had eight calls, in February I had six, and in March I had none. So I want to know what's going on in January. So let's click on this dot here, and again, it will start to be interactive. So I can then see over the month of January how many concurrent calls that we had. Now I can see on the 16th there was a bit of a spike. So let's go and find out what happened on the 16th. So again, I can click through onto this here and I can look at my calls. So I can start to see 2 o'clock, all of a sudden there was a jump where I had 8 concurrent calls at 4 o'clock. So again, I would be interested in drilling through. So again, I can click on this dot, and it would take me through to a 15-minute period where I can see where I hit those eight concurrent calls, which was at, uh, January 16th at 4.15. I can click through to that, and it will show me all of my active calls. So each colored line here is an active call. So before, where we looked at our PowerPoint presentation, across those lines and blocks that were colored in, this is just exactly the same, just on a bigger scale. So this is a 15-minute window. So if you imagine each little bit of this is a grid, and you can see all of your active calls that were happening at any one time. To find out a bit more about that call, you can click on the call. So click on the line here, and it will tell you a bit more information about that call here. Or you can click Show Leg and click OK. It will open a new tab at the top here and show you that specific call that was happening, and you can find out more information about that particular call. Or at the bottom here, you can go down to a single second and find out exactly when you got to eight concurrent calls. So actually on here, it happened over here. I can click on this line, and it will show me the exact eight calls that caused uh, the concurrency to be eight. Now, again, I look at this one here going, well, that call lasted 19 hours and 22 seconds. What was going on with that call? Again, I can click on this to see more details about that particular call and find out what was going on on that particular call. 
So I can see it was an inbound call to Kate Fuller, and it lasted 19 hours and 22 minutes. So was that that Kate forgot to hang up on the call? Possibly we could go and speak to their line manager and find out what happened on that call. You can also come in here and see all of the active calls that are happening at any one time. And again, you could sort on these seizure durations and see which one was the longest during that 15 minute period. Or I can move on to my next 15 minute period and look at the next 15 minutes and see what was going on. See if there was anything strange happening around that time or whether it was just that particular 15 minute period we had a bit of a peak or you know maybe something strange was happening because we could look at the individual calls and find that you know there was an outage on that particular gateway so we could come in and look at these particular calls we could come and look in the quality of the call maybe there was a problem with that particular call we could look at the category we could say you know it wasn't the call outcome wasn't it was failed or there may be a reason for it so you can go through all of these fields and find out information. Now, one thing that you could also look in here and as well as look for the particular call ID. These call IDs do different from CDR source, but there is lots of useful information available in here for you. Thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. And if there is anything else you would like to learn about Tiger Prism and its other modules, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.